In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at my absolute favorite way in which to assign rendezvous points in a IPv4 multicast environment. That's right, we're going to look at BSR for IPv4 multicast in this particular micro nugget. So before we get deep into BSR, let's see the topology that we'll be using in this particular nugget. And you can see we have R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. As a matter of fact, let's kind of refresh ourselves what's going on with this particular topology. I'll go to R3 and I'll bring up the console for the R3 device. All right, let me resize this so we can maximize the real estate in your player whether you're watching on a PC or you're watching on your phone. All right, great. So let me do a show run, include PIM. I think where I'm at, yeah, look at that. Absolutely nothing configured from a multicast perspective. In fact, I bet you I don't even have multicast routing enabled on this device. I don't, nor any of the devices in my topology. Now, do I have full connectivity from an IP perspective? Let's check that out. I can see my interfaces here. Let me ping on the link between router 1, 2. So that's 12, 12, 12, router 1. Yes, I can ping all the way up to router 1. Let me try the routers 4, 5 are connected with 45, 45, 45. Let me ping all the way over to R5. That's great. I think that's possible thanks to EIGRP configured everywhere on this device. Okay, great. So we have this topology with full connectivity, no multicast configuration whatsoever. As an initial step here, why don't I configure PIM sparse mode on, I'll do it on one device so you can see it, and then I'll do it on all of the devices behind the scenes. Let's see, show IP interface brief. Okay, there are my interfaces. So let's go in with our sparse mode PIM configuration. IP multicast hyphen routing in global configuration mode, you recall. Then I'm going to go to my interfaces, gigabit one slash zero, IP PIM sparse mode. And then I'm going to go to the gigabit two slash zero interface and we're gonna do IP PIM sparse mode. Notice that we would at this point configure a static rendezvous point, but no, 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 we're not gonna do that in this particular nugget because we're gonna automate the assignment of the RP using the open standard BSR. Great stuff. So I don't wanna bore you with the remainder of this configuration. We've set up PIM sparse mode on one device. That is the R3 device in our topology. What I'll do now behind the scenes is do that exact same thing on all of the surrounding routers. All right, well, thanks to the wonders of video, we are back and we have configured the sparse mode environment. Now, what's really funny is, this is kind of one of the frustrations with something like sparse mode multicast. We can't really verify all that much. We can't verify the topology is healthy from a multicast perspective because, of course, we haven't done anything with a rendezvous point. If I go to R5, for instance, I can do a show IP PIM interface. I can see that, okay, PIM is functioning on that interface. I can do show IP PIM neighbor. Great, we can see that we are neighboring from R5 with the R4 device. If I go to my interface and say IP IGMP join group 239.5.5.5.5, for instance, and then we go up to the R1 device and we generate traffic for that multicast group it better not work. <laughs> yeah, and it does not function. It better not work because we are in a sparse mode PIM environment and we have done nothing regarding a rendezvous point. We have not engaged static RP mechanisms. We have not engaged Cisco's proprietary auto RP, which we will cover in the very next nugget, by the way. We have not initiated BSR. So 
We're not going to have a functional multicast environment in this particular topology. So now it's time that the stage is set for us to turn our attention to BSR. Now, BSR support in Cisco routers popped up around 11.3 T-Train, and this BSR functionality was welcome because prior to this, we were dealing with auto RP or auto rendezvous point. Again, I'll cover that in the next nugget for you, but auto RP was a Cisco proprietary solution Another one of those cases where Cisco said, all right, we're not going to wait around for a way in which to automate RP dissemination, so we're going to create our own procedure. I prefer BSR. A lot of folks do prefer BSR, but for complete coverage sake, like I said, next nugget, auto RP. What happens in the BSR approach is pretty cool. You have candidate BSRs and you have candidate rendezvous points. So let's say we have these router nodes in our multicast environment. We can have these three devices say, look, we can be the bootstrap router. The bootstrap router is responsible for educating all of the routers that are participating in your sparse mode multicast, the mappings of groups to rendezvous points. So we consider this bootstrap router like a mapping agent, and it's going to be announcing this information to everybody. Then you can go ahead and have a set of devices. Maybe it's these devices right here, these four, that are candidate rendezvous points. Notice there can be an overlap, and there often is, of the BSR and RP functionality. The candidate rendezvous points are saying, look, I want to be a rendezvous point, and of course you can lock that down to certain group assignments. You could even have overlapping for redundancy in the RP to group assignments. So this is a very, very clever and cool system. By the way, what we typically do with these particular devices, both candidate BSRs and candidate rendezvous points, is we typically go ahead and assign loopbacks to them for this purpose, and we have them announce themselves via those loopback IP addresses for the stability that that gives to the process. Now, when it comes to how BSR works behind the scenes, I always like to think of it in terms of three steps. In step one, there is the candidate BSR election process. Think about it. If there's a whole bunch of routers that want to be the bootstrap router, they've got to decide on one. And that is done, as you know, so often with a combination of priority and IP address. So in situations where there are identical priorities on all your candidate bootstrap routers, an IP address can break the tie in that situation. By the way, for these elections and for these communications, BSR will rely on the all PIM routers IP address and that is the multicast address 224.0.0.13. Now, in step two, as you might guess, we've got our BSR elected in our network. Now, the candidate rendezvous points can go ahead and feed their information to this bootstrap router on the network. This results in what in step three is the completion of what we call the rendezvous point set. And this is the information that can be sent out to all of the nodes. This RP set is the candidate RPs that we have in our network, the groups that they want to accommodate. Now what happens is our sparse mode PIM device will go ahead and look at that RP set when it's time to join the tree for a particular multicast group and it will say, okay, based on this RP set information, who should be my rendezvous point? This is of course going to be determined by candidate RP priorities or maybe it's determined by the particular groups that you have assigned to particular 
candidate rendezvous points. By the way, this is where hashing can get into the equation. This will tend to drive students crazy. I wouldn't bother personally getting into the gory mathematical details of how the hashing is going to work, but the hashing is a nice way in which you can implement load balancing across rendezvous points, or in this case, candidate rendezvous points to use the exact language, you can automate the load balancing across multiple candidate rendezvous points for a particular group thanks to this hashing behavior. So it's time to configure this wonderful feature at the CLI. Maybe we're in the lab exam environment and we completely blank. In fact, we're really struggling with the different commands perhaps between BSR and AutoRP, they can be very similar and can be confusing. So you could turn to the documentation for assistance. It would only take a second if you've done your homework. What's your homework? Well, knowing how to find the BSR documentation from this starting point, that's your homework, iOS, and then we're gonna go iOS. And the documentation today has been very sluggish. Uh, this is not the case typically in your exam environment. Good news, it won't take this long. And in fact, I'm starting to get a little troubled here. Let me refresh. Let's try that again. iOS. Come on, you can do it, Cisco. There it is. iOS. And the 15 code documentation, I tried to go there earlier today. It is not available right now, so they're working on that. I'll just go to the 12.4 mainline documentation. And what we're going to find here is a document on IP multicast configuration guide library. And then we would go to the PIM configuration guide library. And we know from experimentation, we know from our CCIE lab practice that the configuring basic IP multicast contains our BSR config. Look at this how to configure basic IP multicast, and there it is, configuring sparse mode with a bootstrap router. We can jump right there and we see the commands. IP PIM BSR candidate, IP PIM RP candidate. I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. We're gonna go over to our R3 device in our topology, where is it? There it is, and we'll make R3 the candidate bootstrap router. I've already got PIM sparse mode set up on this particular device. As you know, I do not have a loopback though. So I'll do interface loopback 3, IP address 3.3, .3, or loopback 0, excuse me. We'll do the quad 3 IP address. We'll do IP PIM sparse mode on this particular interface. And now we will go in and do the IP PIM BSR candidate command. Don't be afraid to utilize your context sensitive help at this point. IP PIM BSR candidate, and it looks like we can specify our loopback zero address, and then we could select a particular hash math length for the RP selection. No need to worry about that. There we go. IP PIM BSR candidate loopback zero. I love it. So now we do the RP candidate on the device that we want to be the RP candidate. Let's slide over to, oh, we'll pick the R4 device for that role. So on R4, I'm going to say interface loopback zero, IP address is 444. By the way, these IP addresses are indeed fully reachable because I've got the underlying EIGRP that is configured for any particular network on the device. All right, IP, I remember this one, PIM, RP, candidate is the command. And again, we specify the particular interface. It's loopback zero, and we can sign a, a, assign a group list, as I alluded to when we were talking about this particular feature. We can set up the interval at which this RP candidate advertises its RP information and a priority so we can balance priorities between different RP candidate devices. Gotta love it. We're just go going with this particular basic config in this case and now we are done. Now the question quickly becomes convenient, efficient verification of the 
bootstrap router configuration that we just did. Well, I know one thing that would be great. Let me go to one far off router in this topology like R1 and let me do a show IP PIM RP map. Do you remember this command? If you watch my earlier nugget, you remember this command. We use this to verify our static RP configuration. So for all of the possible multicast groups, there is indeed a rendezvous point assigned. Awesome. It's 4444, and this was told to us from 3333. Imagine that. The candidate bootstrap router. In fact, look at that. It even says this information came in via bootstrap. So cool. So earlier, we did a ping of the 239.555 group address, which we have an IGMP join for down on R5, and it failed. This time, it works beautifully because the BSR protocol has indeed dynamically educated all of our devices as to the rendezvous point to utilize. So in this micro nugget, we took a pretty in-depth look at BSR for IPv4 multicast. This micro nugget is indeed a small slice of the CCIE routing and switching version 5 CBT nugget series of courses that all of the Cisco instructors here at CBT Nuggets are producing for you. This one is obviously from the Layer 3 section that Scott Morris and I are working on together. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.